The time furries ruined my little sister's high school. By slightly slouched, I am breaking with my usual format of, no caps, no punctuation, because I bring you a story of horror and ecstasy. This story is relayed to you through the lens of my prose, but the events described come directly from my little sister. Some motivational interpretation is present on my part. This is the tale of Pelzignatched, also known as, Spastic Furry Shitcha 2K15. The first thing you ought to know is that this takes place in a high school, a relatively affluent suburban high school. The second thing you ought to know is that the mascot for this high school is a wolf. Due to a caustic combination of too few responsibilities, too much allowance, and absurd levels of moral depravity, there was little chance that fetishistically niche subcultures wouldn't form and form they did. One in particular, however, is central to our story. The furry clique. There was a tribe of furries in my little sister's high school. They called themselves the Wolf Pack, and they all wore tails hanging from their belt loops, every day. Yes. This is a true fact. This is a true fact that happened. I know. Calm down. It gets worse. The vast majority of the rest of the school was sane, at least, and they tolerated the depraved troop of degenerates for quite some time with little incident. However, given the opportunity to socially torment a pariah on the basis of shits and giggles, you can be assured a high school boy will eventually take it. An especially volatile male furry got separated from the pack one day at lunch. Sensing the tangy wafts of basement dweller sweat and stale semen on the air, a rambunctious herd of sophomore boys descended upon him, a ravening mass of cruelty. Within instants the furry was divested of the fluffy treasure which dangled faithfully from the back of his mom jeans, and the ancient secondary educational torture right of keep away began. From my understanding this didn't last all that long. Doubtless this was due to the presence of adults, such as any responsible institution keeps on guard during feeding hours. However, it apparently lasted just too long. Emotions which once had lay dormant in the furry were awakened. Raw rage surged through his veins. He put on his grumpy face and began darkly and magnificently to pout. He had tapped into that bottomless well of righteous umbrage accessible only by those who guard themselves with the wild's veneers. That vast reserve of unceasing murder violence that comes to the fornically inclined. He had the furry fury in his blood, and it wasn't going to leave without action. Somehow, by some mechanism which has been left unclear to me, this furry lad made it perfectly clear to the populace that he was going to bring a gun to school the next day and murder the absolute fucking shit out of just, like, everyone. Yeah, I know. Seems a little extreme. This is why you don't activate the trap card and unleash the furry fury. Plot twist he actually brought the fucking gun. He brought it. Administration had been made aware of his impending normie holocaust, of course, and his personal columbine was cut short literally just past the doors to the school. He was summarily arrested, expelled, and probably told he was kind of an asshole. Not necessarily in that order. But this wasn't to be the end of the story. A furry doesn't just bring a fucking firearm to a public institution of learning with the intent to enact some radical bloodshed on you and your friends without stimulating within you the baleful. Trumpets of the bigot irascible disapprobation of the bite noir, thus triggering irrevocably the inception of societal cleansing act 2 electric show Lou. Basically what I am saying is the entirety of the school went electric sherry apper shit and started the most harrowing anti-furry rumpus this side of the Westboro Baptist Church protesting Zootopia. Motherfuckers descended with impossible haste into a total brouhaha. Furries were getting denuded of their fuzzy ass lanyards left and right. But this is where the story kicks into obscene tempest hyperdrive, just in time to finish. There was one particular female furry who was utterly invested in the cause, to the extent she had terminated all relationships with anyone who wasn't also a furry. She had apparently harangued her poor, clueless mother into sewing a tail onto every single pair of jeans she owned. Knowing furries, I can't imagine she owned that many different pairs of jeans, but I digress. With this kind of dedication to the scene, one can only suppose that she was basically the alpha of the wolf pack. Whoa. It turns out that even using their terminology makes me feel somehow dirty and less human. Who knew? Anyway, sensing a heretofore incalculably magnificent opportunity for japery, and taking advantage of the complete breakdown of order within the halls, some irksome rapscallion took it upon himself to rip the tail off the back of her jeans. But he didn't actually rip it off the back of her jeans. He pulled it through her jeans. He pulled it through the hole in the ass of her jeans. The hole that was apparently in all of her pairs of jeans. It'd like you to take a moment to sit back and imagine this young man's day. A mentally ill peer was just stymied in his attempt at taking your life. 
the resultant hullabaloo is completely exceeding the training and leadership abilities of the teachers to control it. You want to be a hero. You want to detail the alpha. And so stealthily, tasting your impending canonization all the while, you approach from behind. You grab the flocculent appendage, and with a mighty pop you yank it off. Wait a pop? Oh look at that. You're holding a butt plug with a tail on it. Who would have guessed that she'd been wearing a butt plug? Only, I dunno, every single day to the point where she had holes in her clothes specifically for it. It's my understanding that the face-rending hysteria which thereafter ensued prevented classes from getting anything done for a fair couple of days. Too long didn't read some kids tormented a furry until he tried to go full-scale school shooting on their asses. Furries subsequently harassed. One of them had been wearing a butt plug tail to school every day. So you guys have been warmed up nice and lightly now. Let's delve into something a bit more sinister. Via digression is advised. It's hard to clean blood out of the crotch of a fur suit, especially if the fur's white. Sure, you might get the bulk of it off the individual fibers, but a stain will still be there. It's not easy to find someone who wants to blow a six foot tall ferret with a blood stain on the business end. Hi, I am Shane. I am 42 and I am a furry. And no, I am not one of those adorable ones who goes to conventions and acts like my favorite cartoon character and makes cute noises and then goes home. I am a degenerate. I like to be around other degenerates, especially ones in fursuits. Take a moment to psychoanalyze me from your armchair. Ill wait. Ready? Okay, my ilk don't have conventions. We get together. Don't get me wrong, but conventions aren't really our thing. It'd say the closest thing we have is a gaping, sphincter encrusted orgy of bodies sweating and panting inside hot suits trying to bring one another to orgasm. If that last sentence didn't give you an erection, then you probably won't be interested. If you are, send me a private message, there's the background. Now let's get to the root of the problem the pizza sized blood stain all over the cock slot of my suit. Last Halloween, I got a text from my buddy about a beat up at the apartment of one of our regulars. I was excited this guy was a freak. He was independently wealthy, always had the best drugs and booze, and since he owned the whole apartment building, we could be as loud and disgusting as we wanted. I am very loud. I am profoundly disgusting. Anyway, I went and had an absolute blast. Nine guys and two women. Not that the sexes of the participants mattered, of course. We're all just furry plugs and outlets, my friends. Furry plugs and outlets. After the initial debauchery, one of the guys didn't get up off the tarp. He was face down with the rear flap of his fursuit open. That wasn't the odd part, since the flaps of all our suits were open, but unlike us, this guy wasn't moving. The owner of the apartment was extremely pissed off. The exposed skin peeking out from behind his mic from Monsters Inc. costume was beat red. One of the main rules of his house was no one was allowed to overdose. Aside from the complications of dealing with the police and ambulance, it made the whole party look bad. And he not want to look like a bad host. We took turns trying to get the guy to his feet. He was breathing, which was a good sign, but he just wouldn't respond. Now, I've been around ODs before. Shit happens. But something about this guy wasn't right. It never seen him before. Turned out none of us had. It'd say the majority of us had a go at him at one point or another during the festivities, and I am fairly certain I remember his furry, green belly pushing against my forehead pretty early in the night. But now he was still face down on the tarp, preventing our collective liquids from soaking into the carpet. It was a really nice carpet. As the host was looking for his phone to call an ambulance, the prostrate man started to get up. He looked around at us, blinked a few times, then smiled. We all breathed a sigh of relief. Then asked the guy what had happened. He just apologized and told us he has narcoleptic episodes after intense physical exertion, and it's nothing to worry about. Then he made us all laugh when he asked who was ready for another round of action. All of us were, so we started up again. Then the power went out. I was balls deep in our narcoleptic Oscar the Grouch when the room went dark. I didn't mind. Oscar certainly didn't, either. No one did. I heard the host yell, must be the ghost, and we all laughed amidst moans and around mouthfuls of unimaginable depravity. Supposedly the host's apartment was haunted by the original owner. But on we plowed, so to speak, making our way from partner to partner in the dark. A little while later, the room started to smell. Let me be more specific the room started to smell worse. The regular background scent of 11 people fucking in rarely washed suits and working up and good. Frothy sweat in the process can be a bit off-putting to those unaccustomed to our type of fun. 
but this smell was different, and it was powerful. Being the troopers we were, we managed to go for another few minutes before one of us threw up, and that was the end of the orgy. People started to complain about the smell and the host went into the kitchen to grab a flashlight and a few candles while we mulled around and wiped off our various wipeables. A light flicked on and a candle was lit. We surveyed the area and a couple people left. Oscar the Grouch was on the tarp again, as in the air. Something about the color of his skin, even in the dimness of the flashlight and candles, didn't look right. Hey, Oscar, I called, and nudged him. He flopped over onto his side. I sighed as one of the women started to take off the head portion of his suit so he could get some air. The portion came off and the most hideous smell it ever encountered filled the air. The lights blinked back on and everyone shouted in despair and horror. We were all coated in blood and other incomprehensibly horrific fluids. Fast forward a few hours. We were all at the police station. Oscar was dead. Very, very dead. According to someone at the station, he looked like he'd been dead for a long, long time. They were still trying to hit the body. Fast forward to a week later. All of us were charged with desecrating a corpse. In our state of collective disgust and confusion, none of us protested it. It looked like we'd be facing some pretty serious fines and community service, but no jail. Thank god. They still hadn't tied Oscar. Yesterday, I was at home when my phone rang. It was my buddy Hod invited me to the Halloween party. His friend, the wealthy party host, had been doing renovations on the apartment. Apparently the smell just wouldn't get out of the room we'd occupied, so he was tearing down the whole thing. In the process, he came across a note, neatly carved into the wood on the underside of the floorboards. If you ever find this, I am sorry for the trouble I may have caused. I've been watching all the fun you've had over the years and wanted to try it for myself. I figured it wouldn't hurt to give corporeality one more shot. It was very, very worth it. Thanks. I didn't really know how to respond to that. It didn't make much sense, but neither did the narcoleptic furry turned cadaver who showed up at the orgy. I asked my friend what we should do, and he replied pretty quickly, informing me we'd be having another get together to honor the dead man's memory this coming weekend. I can't fucking wait. Apparently there'll be 25 people there, but I just cannot get this damn stain out of my fursuit. I don't think it will make a good first impression with the new folks. Like, seriously, what the actual fuck is this? Like, just stop. It's not cool, right? You know, like, okay, I get it. We're all into, like, you know, weird fucking things. Like, you know, and I'm not one to judge too harshly. Like, you know, I'm, I would be like, oh, well, you know, work away. Like, you know, if you're not hurting anyone, go for it. That's fucking disgusting. Just no. Like, you know, it really is. Like, you know, I, I don't even know how to end this video. Because, like, you know, okay, so the first story was pretty normal cringe level behavior. Pretty fucking immoral, reprehensible, fucking walking about with a bop and skull. That's, no, just probably not a good idea. Not very nice. Um, but that's, like, you know, part of the fandom, I suppose. That's, like, you know, an, a thing, isn't it, with furries? I don't know. But, like, you know, the second one, that it really did go from one to sexy in two seconds. You know, it was... Just what? What? Like, it, it almost would remind you of more of a creepypasta than a furry cringe story, because that, to me, is fucking terrifying. <laughs> like, the idea of that, it's just like, oh god, please make it stop. But hey, let us know if you enjoyed it. Like, you know, I suppose enjoy doesn't really the best word, like, you know, about Harry. <laughs> let us know what you thought, I suppose, would be a better way. Have you ever came across any immoral, degenerate furries, any good stories about them, you know? Or you're furry, in fact. Like, you know, I've had quite a few furries come in and be like, oh, that's nothing like us. That's a fucking out there story. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there is some cringe factor to it. Like, you know, I, d I think m most furries could understand that, like, you know, some parts of the fandom is reprehensible <laughs> let's just say but like you know I, th I'm sure, I, I like i like to keep an open mind to like maybe they're not all bad most of them are though most of them most of them but like you know there's a there's a small minority that can function as normal human beings but hey if you enjoyed like subscribe all that other good shit comment down below as i say if you came across any ones and uh like you know hit that way notification bell to stay up to speed with any and all further videos you know you never know what you might get with here i don't really know what type of videos i do anymore i just do shit that i find on the internet that i think's funny <laughs> be honest with you like that's kind of what i do here so like uh, uh, enjoy i'll see you in the next video all right bye bye if you haven't already check out my red bubble portfolio you might just find something you like this this is, is not okay this needs to stop now this is cancer this 
This is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please? 